After the show tonight, if you would like to check out The Portraits of Courage by George W. Bush, uh, you can do so in The Reach in Studio K. And now, please give a warm welcome to Mary Gaucher. <laughs> Uh, good evening and welcome. Uh, it's great to be here at the Kennedy Center. We heard about this place. <laughs> um, we're here tonight on Veterans Day uh, 2019 uh, to talk about an organization that I've been part of uh, for over six years called Songwriting with Soldiers. Uh, we're a nonprofit organization that pairs professional songwriters with veterans and their families at retreat centers across the nation. Uh, what we do as songwriters is listen to the veterans' stories uh, and we help turn their story into a song. Each veteran that comes to the retreat leaves with their song using their words uh, and they are given a co-publishing uh, agreement so that they are part owner of the song. Songs are property, uh, intellectual property, uh, and we are uh, in business together after we write a song. Um, the retreats are held uh, six or seven locations around the country, uh, and uh, uh, they're small. There's usually three songwriters, eight, uh, seven or eight veterans, uh, sometimes couples, sometimes uh, families. Uh, so what we're gonna play for you tonight is a collection of some of these songs, and I'm gonna talk quite a bit more than I usually do to give you some of the backstory of my co-writers. Um, and this first song I'm gonna play for you from this collection of songs, I should give you a little more backstory. I decided um, almost two years ago, a year and a half or so ago, to put out a recording of these, of some of these songs I've been writing over the last six years with veterans. And the recording is called Rifles and Rosary Beads. Uh, it's a, a, a CD that uh, uh, put out and it went on to get nominated for a Grammy in 2018. Um, and that's a testimony definitely to songwriting with soldiers uh, and to my co-writers whose stories are represented in song on that record. So this first song is, is on the record. It's written with veterans' spouses. Uh, a group of six military spouses sat with myself and the great songwriter Beth Nielsen Chapman at a retreat uh, in Bluemont, Virginia, uh, not too far from here, at Bo Boulder Crest Retreat Center. And what we sat down and talked about was what it was like to be a military spouse uh, in, at that time, 2016. Uh, and what we heard them say unequivocally is that there is a war after the war. Uh, what we were told is that they thought the goal was to get their husbands home alive and then everything was gonna be okay. Uh, and each woman said that was not their experience, that what they were dealing with was a war after the war, and they often felt invisible in their struggle. And so I just put on the top of the page, war after the war. As a songwriter, I know a good title when I hear one. And boy, is that a good title. And we proceeded as a group to write this song. So we're gonna start with this one. Um, and I'm just gonna keep bragging because I'm so proud of of these songs and these co-writers. This was named by Malcolm Gladwell as his favorite song of 2018. And we're thrilled about that because it helped more people to be introduced to the song. The war after the war. We ready? Here we go. Two, three, four. Who's going to care for the ones who care for the ones who went to war? There's landmines in the living room, eggshells on the floor. I lost myself in the shadow of your honor and your pain. You stare out of the window as our dreams go down the drain. In the the war after the war I get no bay 
basic training. I get no purple heart. I am supposed to carry on. I can't fall apart. People look at you and thank you for the sacrifice you made. They look at me and smile, say I'm lucky you're okay. In this world. soldier too just like you serving something bigger than myself I serve unseen caught in between my pain and the pain of someone so much. This next song I'm going to play for you, I, I wrote with a female soldier. She served in Iraq, and uh, her name's Brandy Davidson, and R Brandy and I sat down, and I asked her what she did uh, in the Army while she was over in Iraq. She said she was a large engine mechanic, and I took one look at her and thought, my goodness, I would not have expected that. She um, just let's just say she didn't look like a large engine female mechanic. I look like a large engine female <laughs> mechanic. <laughs> Brandy is uh, um, a class president, uh, extremely charismatic, uh, quite feminine, um, a beautiful woman, uh, engaging, uh, and uh, absolutely, uh, when she walks into a room, all eyes turn towards her because she's got that charisma. Uh, and so I said, what was it like for you working on the big engines over there? Uh, and she looked at me and she said, the engines weren't the problem. <laughs> she taught me about a thing I didn't know about. Uh, it's called MST, military sexual trauma. Uh, there's a very large problem in all branches of our military with military sexual prob trauma. The, the women are struggling with it uh, to this very day. Uh, and this song is, is uh, a little bit uh, of an explanation or at least uh, some, some sort of look at, at what one woman went through. 
uh, and during her service. It goes like this. I was an army mechanic. I worked with the men. I worked on my back. I tried to fit in. Torque wrenches and ratchets, multimeters and scales. Grease on my face, grease on my hands, grease under my nails. And it was so hard to see until it attacked with my enemy. Wasn't I right? Soldiers bartered and traded. It's the way our world worked. Trading favors for favors in the sand and the dirt. I'm lucky enough to have one of the veterans that I co-wrote with through Songwriting with Soldiers here with me tonight. His name is Jamie Trent, and I'd love to invite him up. Um, he served in the Navy during Desert Storm, and we wrote a song together uh, that uh, 
is a short story about about uh, uh, kind of what, what it feels like on Veterans Day for this particular character that we wrote about. Can you remember how this whole song came to be? I, I can't fully. I can. So uh, you were backstage at the uh, Opry that night, getting ready to uh, go on stage. You were in the Johnny Cash room, I believe. At the Grand Old Opry? You were, yep. And uh, Mary sent me a, a text out of the blue. Said, I got a chorus. I really need your help. And I had just gotten to know Mary. It, it was the beginning of our relationship. This is going on four years ago. So back then and still today, if Mary Gaucher texts me and asks me if I want to co-write a song with her, I'm going to drop everything that I was doing and uh, oblige her. <laughs> so I think for the next 10, 12 hours, she had two shows that night. So she was texting me in between the breaks and whatnot. And I believe about 6 or 7 o'clock at night the next day, we uh, had it pretty much done. <laughs> and it was a blur. I, I don't remember really. I, we didn't write, I met Jamie through Songwriting with Soldiers, but we didn't write this one at a retreat. We, we kind of just went back and forth on email and text. And See, I, I, as a songwriter, what, what I'm looking for is uh, a little movie. I need to get a context to put the, the story in, and I've, I've never been in the military, and, and I've, I've certainly uh, 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 never be, been in, in a battle. Uh, so I, I don't have the visual. I don't have the. I can't imagine it. I, I don't. I don't have that experience. And so, I think I had. Uh, they they thank me for my service, and yeah. they wave their little flags and they yep. genuflect on Sunday. And I know they'd send us back or something like that. Yeah, you said you came up with it at the park one day. I was walking yeah. on the trail where, I, where I, I hike every day in Nashville, Tennessee, where I live, and that just dropped into my brain, and I didn't know what to do with it. So I just sat there for a while, and then for some reason, this is right, it's coming back. I was in the Johnny Cash room at the Opry waiting yeah. to go on stage, and it occurred to me that I should reach out to Jamie Trent because Jamie, in addition to... Uh, coming through the Songwriting with Soldiers program, he's also a songwriter. N most of the veterans we work with are not songwriters, but Jamie is a really good songwriter, and it just hit me, oh, reach out to Jamie, because he might be able to help me find the little movie that I need to get this song going. And then what he told me was that on November the 11th, which is today, uh, if you have an active duty military ID, you can get free breakfast at the Waffle House. Boom, movie. Yep, rest was a blur the after rest that. rest was yeah. 10 hours of back and forth, and then we had a song. Let's play it for the people. All righty. <laughs> November, Nashville, Tennessee. Free breakfast at the Waffle House. If I show my ID, a parade up on the riverfront, you can hear trumpets play. Hands on heart, the color guard kicks it off on Veterans Day. And they, they thank, thank me for my sir. service. And wave their little flags. They genuflect on Sundays, and yes, they send us back. And I believe in God and country, and in the angels up on high, and in heaven shining down on us through bullet holes in the sky. Ask me how I'm doing I don't know what to say I was thinking about the battlefield The night I learned to pray Marchers make their way down Main Street The crowds begin to cheer I feel my chest explode 
as my eyes fill up with tears and they thank me for my service and wave their little flags they genuflect on Sundays and yes they'd send us back but I believe in God and country and in the angels up on high and in heaven shining down on us through bullet holes in the sky and those who remain as the clouds burst over Nashville it begins to rain and they thank me for my service and wave their little flags they genuflect on Sundays and yes they'd send us back but I believe in God and country and in the angels upon us in heaven, shining down on us through bullet holes in the sky. And in heaven, shining down on us through bullet holes in the sky. Jamie Trent, y'all. Mary Gaucher, McKaylee. Oh, thank you so much, Jamie. I'm so glad you're able to join us. Um, I'm wearing a poppy. It's a white poppy. Somebody gave it to me at the show. Believe it or not, we played in Edinburgh last night, night before last. We were in Scotland, we were in the United Kingdom for an a eight-show run, and we ended it in Edinburgh. And uh, it's Remembrance Day uh, in the United Kingdom, uh, and a lot of folks wear poppies. Uh, this is a white poppy. Uh, the uh, uh, significance of it is that it's a, um, a poppy for peace, uh, and it also is, is white to uh, uh, acknowledge the lives lost that were uh, not just military, but also civilians. Uh, and so I have so many incredible gifts that people have given me as I travel the world with these two amazing musicians playing these veterans' songs. Uh, so many stories to tell. Uh, I should write a book if I ever slow down uh, just about doing this work. Uh, this, this next song is co-written uh, with a veteran and his wife uh, through the Songwriting with Soldiers program. Uh, and uh, James... Uh, and Sarah Dooley came to me uh, to, to, uh, to get their couples song. Uh, the way that this particular retreat worked is it was for military couples, any branch of the military, but they had to be EOD. EOD stands for Explosive Ordnance Disposal. Every branch of our military has bomb experts, uh, and these men, uh, and there's also women EOD, uh, are highly trained to dismantle bombs that are built to kill our soldiers and kill civilians. Uh, and as you can imagine, these marriages are, are under a lot of pressure. Uh, what a job to be a bomb expert. And so as I sat down with James, James and Sarah, what we did was uh, try to get a couple song, and they told me, try to write something light and uplifting. 
uh, which is not at all what I do, and uh, <laughs> apparently it's not what James and Sarah wanted to do either. So what we ended up with was uh, uh, James uh, telling me how he, he felt about Sarah. Uh, we reached a certain place in the co-write where Sarah was getting frustrated because James wasn't talking much, so she just said, James, why don't you write with Mary, and I'll just uh, go get something to eat. And so she left us there, and, and he started talking a lot more when she walked away. And what he said, I said, look, just tell me why you stay with this woman. Uh, what keeps you married to Sarah, and we'll get this done. And he said, well, that's easy. Her love keeps me here. Her love is why I'm still alive. It's her love that keeps me on earth. And I'm like, okay, it's her love is the title of, of this song. And, and James and I were able to write it pretty quickly. James had been in a very serious explosion. His back had been hurt uh, in multiple places. His back was broken. And so he was in a lot of pain. And as we sat down to, to finish this, he couldn't find a place or or a position where he wasn't struggling. He couldn't lay down, he couldn't stand up, he couldn't be against the wall anywhere without being in pain. And we tried to get this done as fast as we can. He, he just told me what he was going through uh, at home and at night. And, and we just wrote a love song for his wife, Sarah. It is not a little light love song at all, but it is indeed a, a, a song that is pays tribute to the love of one person for another. James adores his wife. This is called It's Her Love. When the darkness draws near and I'm shackled chained to my fear and the nightmare my 
beautiful anchor to reality. It's her love. It's her. play you a song I wrote with a female fighter pilot. She flew combat missions. She was also a flight instructor. She was in the Marines. And when she got out, she came up to, up to Bluemont, Virginia at the Boulder Crest Retreat Center, and she ran that center for a while. She, when I sat down with her, wanted to write about some of the struggle our veterans are having with suicide ideation and actual uh, crisis that we're in as a nation with veteran suicide. And what she taught me, her name is Jennifer Marino, what she taught me was uh, the skills that, that you must master to be good in a battle are some of the things that'll kill you at home. And this song uh, was co-written with her. And it is indeed called Soldiering On. When Jen got out of the Marines, before she went to Boulder Crest, she rode her bike from New York City all the way to Los Angeles, and she knocked on the doors of Gold Star Mothers, and she thanked them and hugged them. And her mom followed it in a van as she rode across country. She's an incredible person, and uh, I knew that there was something special about her straight away. And uh, when we were done writing, I, I went and Googled her to see what the deal was. And I uh, found out as I poked around uh, that she was the co-pilot of the first ever all-female crew to fly a U.S. president. Her and the women flew Barack Obama on chop Chopper 1 and they made history. She's a genuine <laughs> badass uh, and she's also a real good songwriter. This is a song we wrote, it's called Soldiering On. I was bound to something bigger, more important than a single human life. I wore the uniform with honor. My service was not a sacrifice. And what saves you in the battle? can kill you at home. A 
something bigger and more important than a single human life. I wore the uniform with honor. My service was not a sacrifice. And we'll save you in the battle. Kill you at home. I sold you. So. Italy, the maestro Michele Gazic. Yeah. 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 On 
I'm going to play the title song from the Rifles and Rosary Beads record for you. I wrote of the young man who served during the surge of Fallujah. His name is Joe Costello. Uh, we wrote this at the Cary Center for Global Good in, outside of Albany, New York. We find these uh, really cool retreat centers to go work at with the veterans, and uh, the Cary Center is a fantastic place. Uh, and we, we sat down in the library and, and talked, and, and Joe uh, um, was, was n not, uh, um, he, he was really struggling with uh, what's, what I've come to understand uh, is called moral injury, where in the service uh, you are required to do things that go against your own sense of morality. Moral injury is a, a real wound and it's a heavy, heavy burden. And Joe was trying to reconcile what he had to do in the war with who he believed himself to be. Uh, and as we sat down, uh, I could see the pain in his eyes and it was all over his face. And I didn't know what to say except for just give me some visuals. Like I said at the beginning of the show, I need imagery, a little movie to write a song. I need to have a story. I need to see back uh, into the, the happenings. I need a scene. So I said, what did you see when you got out off of that plane, 19-year-old Joe, boots on the ground in Fallujah? What, what did you see? We can come up with something from that. And he said, well, Mary, there was yellow smoke and orange haze everywhere. And every night at, at dusk, whistling sunset bombs would come in. Uh, he said, there were guys and women holding their rifles so tight their knuckles were white. He said, there were others with rosary beads in their hands and they were praying. He said, there were kids in the street crying and we weren't allowed to console them because they could be booby trapped. He said there were bombed out schools, there were bombed out homes. Um, when he said rifles and rosary beads together in one sentence, it just went to the top of the page. I knew that would, would be one hell of a song and it has become the title of the record. Uh, rifles and rosary beads is one man's experience, but I think it exists outside of time. It is a universal experience of war. I just wanna say as a running commentary that Every one of these soldier songs in my heart of hearts, I believe they're prayers for peace. Uh, that, like this white poppy that was given to me the night before last in Scotland. Uh, we human beings have, have seen enough war. These experiences that we're uh, transcribing through songwriting with soldiers, every one of them is a, a deep seated and heartfelt prayer for an end to war. On this Veterans Day, I bring you rifles and rosary beads. Can you put some more bottom in everywhere, especially in my monitor, if you would, Ronnie? On the guitar. Rifles and rosary beads You hold on to what you need Like a dim morphine dreams Rifles and rosary beads Yellow smoke on orange haze Sunset bombs I couldn't trust The sky Rifles and rosary beads You hold on to what you need Like a Rifles and rosary beads. Cool. 
was wrapped around a blackness that has no sound. Bombed out schools and homes, kids in the street, alone, rifles and play one more of these soldier songs and their wives songs this one is written with a group of military spouses all of these women are married to EOD experts that are married to the bomb guys six wives and myself and the songwriter Ashley Cleveland sat down and Ashley and I asked them how do you do it how do you stay married to these bomb guys and they said well here's what we do we do it together, us women, we're very close. We look after each other, we look after each other's children. Our husbands are gone sometimes for months and we don't hear from them, they can't call home. We just take care of each other while they're gone. And we're stronger together. And this became the EOD Wives song. They say no man's left behind, but that ain't true. And they hate it that they need us, but they do. They lose their fingers, lose their limbs. We try to love them back together again. They say no man's left behind, but that ain't true. And they're hurt in places that the eye can't see. We miss the man our husbands used to be. The military breaks their heart. We're there when they fall apart. They're hurt in places that the eye can't see. And we're stronger together. all we've got it 
don't look like much, but we know it's a lot. Every time he says goodbye could be the last time we see him alive. We focus on the good, that's all we've got. EOD wives don't sit by the phone. No news is good news back at home. When he's a mission ready at his best, we take care of all the rest EOD wives don't sit by the phone and we're stronger show where I'm going to try to get you to sing. I realize it's going to be real hard to do today here at the Kennedy Center with you guys out there so exposed in a semi-lit room, not much alcohol, but we've been traveling hard and so many miles behind us, and I just feel so much more energy when I hear your voice coming back up here, and so does Jamie and Michaela. When we hear you sing, it gives us more energy to keep going. And I do realize I'm asking you fellas to call yourself a sister here tonight at the famous Kennedy Center, but it's just a chorus women have been allowing ourselves to be included in mankind since the beginning of the beginning. If you just go along with being a sister for a chorus, we sure would appreciate it. Stronger to get
Thank y'all. Thank y'all for coming out tonight. Thanks for for uh, for joining us. I'm gonna play one more for you. I need to introduce this incredible singer songwriter to my left. This is Jamie Harris. Hey. Uh, we'll play this song. This is a, a song I wrote in 2002 before the invasion of Afghanistan and Iraq and uh, could see it coming and uh, I knew that it was going to land hard on, on uh, less than 1% of our population. That's who serves. They're carrying the weight for all of us. I just want to think of them uh, today on this Veterans Day. Um, this is a song called Mercy Now. And uh, it's getting old now. It's, uh, <laughs> what is it, 17 years old now. Gosh, it'll be 17 years old next year. It's making its way into its uh, horrible teenage years. Made it through the other side almost. It's becoming uh, older than me uh, in many ways. It's wiser than me. Sometimes songs are way ahead of the songwriter. This definitely was ahead of me. I would have never imagined uh, where we are in 2019 when I wrote this, but as you will soon hear, if you haven't heard it, the song had some idea of what was coming. Um, I'm going to run back to the table after this song. I do have a bunch of CDs, including the Rifles and Rosary Beads CD. The Maestro also has some of his CDs back there, and we'd be happy to sign for you. We have tour posters as well with the three of us uh, depicted in an artful way. It looks so much more attractive on the poster than in real life. And um, we appreciate, again, the opportunity to play here. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Take care. Thank you back there, Ryan. Y'all take care. could use a little mercy now the fruits of his labor falling right slowly on the ground his work is almost over won't be long he won't be around
in the race towards another mushroom cloud. There's people in power who'll do anything to keep their crown. I love life, life itself. Thank you.